Welcome back to The Build. This is episode six of the 4x5 camera build series. In this episode, we're going to start wrapping it up and putting everything together. We're almost done, I promise, even with the brief snowstorm. It's all fit. That took a couple hours. <laughs> all right, just took the uh, frame out of the clamps. It looks okay. All right, so I'm gluing this very thin strip in on the inside of the rear frame to contain the bellows. Okay, I have these clamps and I'm just gently placing the frame aligning film over. Okay, it does lock. Okay, that's even better. Nice line up there, nice line up there. This reveals good. I do like a little bit of squeeze out, so that's good. So this is the base plate that will hold the ground glass. Pretty tight. All right, well, this is the frame for the ground glass. And it's coming along okay. I'm just trying to kind of walk it into the five millimeter, 4.8 millimeter thickness that I'm shooting for. And I'm already at 5.13. It has to be super flat, has to be essentially 4.8 millimeters, um, but it's so thin that I'm, as I kind of walk it in, um, I'm just being very careful to keep the thickness uniform. So I'm just taking very light shavings all the way around it. All right, so this is the ground glass frame, and it's all glued up. All right, I have some glass. This is an 8x10 sheet, 332nd thickness. I don't know if that's too thick or not. We're going to give it a go. sharp though. Nothing to see here. Cautionary tail. I still don't know how to get this stuff off. It's like a really heavy... What the heck is this stuff? So I guess I'm going to get a putty knife. Oh, look at that. I cracked it. What I'm gonna try here is I've got a sanding block with, I'm not sure what this is. And I've got a couple different grits. I'm gonna try just wet sanding this and see if I can get it to work. It's either gonna polish it or it's gonna scratch it like what I want. So far, it's doing nothing. No such luck. It did scratch it though. All right, so what I have here is a new cross slide vise that I borrowed. And this is where it's really cool. Is I can put it pretty much exactly where I want it. For sharp bits, so that's good. Let's see how far I can travel this thing. Uh, I won't quite make it, that's my prediction. Oh. 
and make it. All right, so I cut these little pins. And they fit right in, just like this. So what this does is it allows us to put the spring here. And I had thought about using some hickory, and I still may do this, I don't know. I do like the look of the hickory. But I also got a pack of uh, feeler gauges. And these uh, come in a variety of thicknesses. And these may actually also work. And I picked up some used bandsaw blade. This is like a resaw blade. And this also has a nice amount of spring, like just it's not, I don't think it's technically spring steel, but this could also work. All right, what I've got here is a feeler gauge. This is a 50,000 thickness. Um, I think it has a, about the right kind of flex. Um, I've got several other thicknesses to choose from if this isn't right, but what I'm going to do, this is, I think, a 12 inch, just short of 12. I think what I'll do is uh, cut this little hole off and then cut it in half, and I think that should give me enough thickness here. It's funny because some of the feeler gauges you could tear with your fingers are so thin. <laughs> this one is not quite that thin. And I have a feeling the spring is going to be probably too stiff. It's just as I tighten this down, it is stiff. Oh yeah, that's really stiff. It's basically a vice. Okay, so 50 thousandths. Too much power. There, there. It's in. Whew, that was easy. Well, the good thing is I have quite a few different thicknesses. I've got, I think I've, this is a 50, I think I've got a 30. So, got a couple things to play with, but way too powerful because you should be able to just slide this out. Super easy, and this is the opposite of that. All right, so I'm just um, attaching the clips that will bind the back frame together. So I've got that one shaped, and then this one will clip on like that. I'm going to shape this little plate into a clip. So I've got these two clips in the bottom. So they're fixed. They won't need to slide anywhere. They're just going to hold the bottom of this frame. And then this is going to be a clip that's going to slide back and forth. So here's my attempt, first attempt, using my slide, cross slide vise to cut the slot, and that was a failure. Cross slide, I mean, it's really hard to cut on a drill press with a mill end. This one's a little bit better, I just went really slow. I still made a couple hiccups here where it just, the 
bit sort of is enough, has enough force where it pushes the cross slide vise around a little bit. So just got to take it slow. We're going to try this. I'm going to clean this up with a file. Okay, well, this is the general idea. So we slide this to the side and that releases this top. But I'm going to have to make that clip, I think, a little smaller so it allow this to slide out or make this cut a little more severe. But um, also, I don't like the pivot here too much. I just got this a couple days ago, two days now. But uh, this should be sharp enough. I've got several different grits. This should be sharp enough to actually polish the glass and grind it. Um, the aluminum oxide from the sandpaper wasn't sharp enough, I found. I couldn't, I couldn't get it to just polish rather than scratch the glass. So this should be the solution for that. So um, this is about 10 bucks for, I think, four different grits. I'll probably not use the 60 to 90. I'll probably start with 120, 220. And I might, might do um, the 600. So I'm going to use this as basically my interference grinder. Um, so I need a little bit of epoxy. That's cool. All right, so this will be my grinder. I'm just gonna let that set up while I go out and get some uh, more screws. And then I think I'm gonna do the ground glass when I get back. All right, well, that was just about three minutes of polishing. It wasn't that long, but boy, that, that looks great. That is a ground glass surface, but I'm not sure if this is what I need or not. I mean, it, it definitely looks good. Is that enough? I don't know. Um, interestingly, when you first put the grid on there, it felt like ball bearings, like there wasn't a lot of resistance, but as this ground glass sort of roughened up, you could start to feel it sort of grab more. It's very well frosted. So that was uh, 120 slash 220. I could go to 600. I'm tempted just to do that, just to see what happens. All right, clean this off. It probably doesn't come through very well, but it's a. Uh... It does look less frosted, but still opaque. I'm not sure if that's good or not. I mean, ultimately, the finer polish I use, the more like glass it'll look like again, because it'll just polish the surface and make it shiny. But this seems to let maybe a little bit more light through, at least that's what it looks like anyway. And this is the shiny side but a pretty clear winner for the silicon uh, carbide stuff. It just cuts almost instantly, like it wasn't goofing around at all. So sandpaper, no, silicon carbide, yeah. All right, so I just put the glass in. It's a pretty snug fit. I'm gonna figure out some way to stick this in here, but the way I have it set up now is it won't come out. <laughs> Unless, unless I push it out. Is it the right brightness? I don't know. But let's put a bellows in this and a lens and see what we see. There it goes. There we go now. 
out how this all works. Okay, well that's interesting. Well, I was hoping the bellows weight wouldn't be an issue. It's just really heavy. And what I need to do, this is a 90 millimeter lens, and I need to get it, infinity focus would be right here. So in order to do that, I have to pull it way in and I'm not a, quite able to get it where it needs to go. But I do have another lens. I just don't have a lens board for it. So I'm gonna have to cut that out. Um, it has a slightly different requirement, um, but we'll try the 210 and see if that works with this bellows. Why is that one, maybe one and a half inches? It's a little bit bigger than that. Let's see if I've got the right bit. I don't know if I do. Inch and a quarter force here. I'm gonna have to go shopping. Okay, so I needed to get a hole saw kit for to have the, um, the correct size. Here's an inch and a half. Okay, so I've got this block of wood. It's a piece of hardwood of some sort. I'm not sure what it is. It's got some nice grain structure. I took this out of my parents' garage and uh, I'm gonna try to make some knobs out of it. I'm not super happy with the mahogany. The mahogany knobs, um, I like the color. I just don't like the grain. It's kind of an open grain and it's, so it's a little chunky and uh, rough and I'm looking for more of a polished look. Here's one core. That looks pretty good. Super tight grain. I like that. It's already smooth. And that's just from cutting the whole saw. All right, so I've got three knobs of that hardwood. This one was cut along the end grain and it cut the easiest. And it looks okay. I really like these though. I like kind of the smooth feel to them and the complex look and I might clean these up and see what happens. Look at that pattern. God, it looks like Jupiter. It's very nice. I'm impressed you've made it this far into the video series. Thanks so much for watching and following along. What I'm doing here is uh, just applying a couple coats of clear shellac just to protect the wood. I thought the cherry grain really popped. It kind of gives a honey color to it, which I like. I went to Blue Moon Cameras in Portland, Oregon and picked up some black and white Ilford HP5 Plus film. So in this next episode i'm going to uh, make a few exposures and see how it looks and how it turns out so hopefully you can follow along for that as well please subscribe if you haven't already so you get a notification when that pops up thanks again for watching